It takes just five steps to create a stunning logo animation, and they are way easier than you might think. I'll show you my exact formula to make this happen in After Effects. I started with this logo as an SVG file. First, I separated each letter into its own layer, even the little red dot right here. Some of the letters were merged together so I used the pen tool and the shape builder tool to clean them up. Once everything was organized, I renamed each layer to save time. I opened the illustrator file as a composition and converted each layer into a shape layer. Then, of course, I had to rename everything again so I guess that time saving plan didn't really work out. But, as they say, always label our layers, so I color coded each one to make them easier to recognize during the process. I started with the first two letters. At first, I clicked the little solo button so only these letters were visible. But then I had a better idea. I used the shy icon on all the other layers to hide them. Honestly, it's such an underrated tool. Next, I selected the pen tool with the stroke option to draw over the letter. Then I used Trim Path to create the animation. After that I applied the Matte option to the stroke so the effect would follow the shape of the letter. I did the same for the second part of these letters. Then I repeated it for all the other letters. This created our first animation. I pre-composed each letter and then offset them in the timeline. Now it's time to add the red color trace. Believe me, this part is the easiest. I just duplicated the layer and added a fill effect. I didn't even have to choose the color because red is the default. Then I offset duplicated layer. The colored layer goes below, so the black appears on top after the red. I did the same for all the other letters. Told you, easy. For the red dot I used only three keyframes. The last one stays in its original position. The first is positioned below the red trace. And the middle keyframe adds a little overshoot animation. Then I added the offset path effect. I placed the first keyframe on the amount property and set it to zero. I moved it forward a few frames and added another keyframe. This time I changed the value to minus 13. Then I adjusted the motion curves in the graph editor to make the movement feel natural and dynamic. Instead of keyframing both layers, I created a null for each letter. I parented the layers and added position keyframes only to the null. In the timeline, you only see the null layers, a nice little benefit from that underrated tool. And of course, adjusting the motion curves is just as important to make the animation feel natural. Now each letter animates from bottom to top. Then I pre-composed all the letters, so now our text animation is contained in one layer. That part always feels satisfying. To make this logo stand out even more, I added a custom element. This is the step that really makes the animation feel original. I designed this icon in Illustrator and opened it as another composition in After Effects. Then I added the Trim Path effect and set a keyframe for the end property. I moved forward a few frames and added another keyframe at the beginning, setting the percentage to zero. Next I copied the Trim Path effect and pasted it to the other layers. Since all of them are just stroke shapes, it creates the same drawing effect across each one. Then I offset those layers in the timeline to make the animation flow in sequence. For these layers I also animated the offset property that gives it a motion that feels like a vinyl record spinning or playing. I got that look simply by experimenting with keyframes. Once it worked, I copied those keyframes and added them to the first layer in the timeline. After that, all strokes needed to disappear, so I added the keyframes for the start property. The first one at 0% and the second at 100. It's basically the opposite of the end property. I repeated this for all stroke layers. By selecting all keyframes and holding ALT, you can stretch or compress them to adjust the animation speed. Bear with me a little longer, because now we need to create a shape that will actually reveal the custom element we just animated. 
I added the rectangle and turned the roundness all the way up to create a circle. Then I added a keyframe to the roundness so it smoothly transforms from a rectangle into a circle. Next I duplicated the layer and added position, scale and rotation keyframes. This makes the rectangle slide in from the left while rotating towards the center. After that I added scale keyframes to blend the circle with our red dot. Finally, I used a null layer to add a little overshoot animation anticipating the scale down movement. Now let's add that custom element to the shape animation we just created. Last but not least is creating the loop. This step might seem obvious, but it's crucial. The animation starts from a plain empty screen, so to make it seamless it also has to end the same way. That's why I added the final keyframes to make the logo disappear. A lot of great motion designers use this technique. It's simple, effective and gives your animation that satisfying endless feel. Now let's see where these techniques actually works. I animated two more logos to show where this workflow really fits. The first one is this logo. Because it has heavy geometric shapes, the animation style feels a bit off. It still looks cool, but the style doesn't really match the character of the logo. Now look at this second one. Here you can see that these techniques actually do the job. The movement fits better and the rhythm feels right. You can always push it further by adjusting more elements that match the brand. Creating a logo animation isn't that scary. The only thing you really need is patience. As a motion designer, you need a lot of it. That's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.